crazy technology, man. We're pulling out. We're doing it. It's the captain's log. Captain's oh. log. We're with Carlos Mencia. <laughs> He's had off the hook all weekend, right? Yep. I got, dude. I'm such a, I'm such a, such a geek and a nerd that the whole uh, captain's log gets me, bro. You like it? Uh, I love it. Ah, it I makes you like. I can't even say. I can't even think of the words. Captain's log without saying it the way Captain Kirk used to say it. <laughs> Captain's log. Starting pull up. Yeah, I can't. I can't get away from that. Well, you have to talk like that the whole. The rest of the whole. <laughs> no, <street>. you can't. <laughs> but, it's like, but I'm. I love mimicking. I'm not good at impressions. Yeah, you I love, are. I, I like, like when I you am. do your impressions. I, I mimic very well though. Like I mimic well. I, okay. I do. I, that's what I think it is. I think it's like an exaggerated version. Because maybe it's just me, but like. Every impression I do sounds to me like me doing an impression of that person. Whereas if the, I like watch, you know, Caliendo or guys like that, yeah. they literally sound like the person. I don't feel like I sound that way. No, I do. Even when you riff, like when you just do stuff that it's like not, you know, rehearsed, I think you do it good. Like this week's, this week's bit of Mencia is going to be about Bill Cosby because... The court case is going on right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna like I'm gonna do a joke about that, and the whole time I'm like, man, when I do it live, it feels fun and like people laugh. But then, but now I'm gonna actually do it and edit it and hear myself going, and I'm like, I'm, I know I'm gonna be like, oh fuck, that sounds like nothing yeah. like him. <laughs> but whatever. You could you critique it all? It's it's not as much a critique as much of. Um, just like I, I know the things that I'm good at and the things that I'm not good at. And that's like one of those things that I I feel like as long as you know that I'm mimicking and not really doing an impression, then I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess, I mean, in order to be good, you got to be, you got to be pretty hard on yourself, right? I think so. If you're not like, you know. Like somebody has to be gotta, hard on you correct. in order for you to push yeah. yourself yep. to... I was talking to somebody about this the other day. It's kind of like there are very few, if any, fighters, either MMA or boxing or kickboxing, whatever whatever sport you talk, that grew up wealthy. Sure. Because, yeah, because somebody rich, somebody that grew up in a comfortable environment, isn't going to take a punch to the face and then be okay with it. Yeah. And then just kind of go, well, how do I take more punches? You you gotta be you gotta be poor and have a, a frame of mind of like I gotta want it so bad that yeah you're not gonna knock me out yeah and you I'm gotta be knock, a scrapper right roll with the punch yeah I hear you yeah and so that's kind of like that's kind of the way I look at success like in in order to be successful you have to have a certain attitude you know and good like Kobe has that attitude Jordan had that attitude. Uh, LeBron James doesn't. I was just going to say, that was my next thing. What do you think right? about LeBron? Oh, his game is ridiculous. Right. But he but, doesn't seem like he has that. But think about it. How much of a different player would he be if he had the Jordan attitude or the Kobe Bryant yeah. attitude? But again, this year, crazy, right? Crazy year? It's, it, it, this whole, like, these past three to five years have just been really really crazy and interesting in like every way so many different things i mean you know from trump becoming president to hillary being hated you know to the bushes not being like i mean dude it's just been the sensitivity the me too thing the, i mean there's la gets hit with fires and then right. it rains and they have mudslides i mean like literally weeks later you guys get hit by hurricane houston gets hit by hurricane i mean it, it's Do just you think been... that there's just so many social media outlets where it's everywhere blasting in your face and that happened before and now you just hear about it or this is just like you think it's just gone crazy no, because these are big stories. Right. I mean, we're not even talking about stuff that's trending right now. Like, if I went on Yahoo right now or whatever, it's they put up the top ten things that are yeah. trending. I don't know. It would be none of the stuff that we're talking about. Do you ever go on? You do that? No, no. I mean, I sometimes I do just to see if there's maybe something I want to steer toward or maybe talk about or maybe right. you know, like I never want to be. I want to be like George Carlin, 
you know, who's 70, 80 years old and still putting out specials and 20, 30 year olds are still watching it. Right. Right. Like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be the guy that has a flip phone because he's 60 or 70 or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and then doesn't know what to do with the next yeah, stuff. I just no don't want to be that relevant, guy. relevant, right. Correct. I, but, but this, yeah, not just the relevant part, it's just the staying, like, staying aware. Not just culturally, but you know, with pop, with pop, and what's going on, and you know, what gadgets are coming out, and you know, being aware of that kind of stuff. You're an iPhone guy. I'm Speaking both. Gadgets. So what the heck? You have both. So when the iPhone first came out, I couldn't transfer my number from T-Mobile okay. to AT and T, and most people forget that when the first iPhone came out, it was only through AT and T. Right. So I got the iPhone because I wanted an iPhone, but I had to get it through AT&T, so I had two phones at that point. Well, later on, this older phone became the phone that all my friends have, my family have. Yeah. And so this is my family phone. When it rings, I usually have to spend money. And this is my business phone, ah. which when it rings, I make money. So nice. I want this one to ring more than this one. I don't call you on either phone, so what, what, what the hell do I get? Jesus. Well, you would be on this phone. You'd be on my phone. Okay. Right? That's okay. business phone. You would be You would be on the one that I can't ignore. Yeah. So if this one comes up, I got to check who it is and make sure that, you know, I want to get back to him. This one I can ignore, you know. It's, it's what about my the wife? Brother, Does she my know cousin. you have two phones? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When she... When she... She normally texts me on the iPhone because she knows that I'm gonna answer. But when she really needs me to know something, she, I'll get a text on both phones from her. So, yeah. So then you're getting lit up. Yeah, so that, that's that what means it's you like. better get on the horn? Yeah, that Fast. means you, you need to know what this is all about. Yeah. It's, ra it's rarely call me back. It's more of like something happened, you know. Uh, the, the last time I got a double text from her was the, the, four days ago. Um, there was a gas leak at the house because uh, one of the trees roots. And oh. we had told we had told the gas department like you guys are gonna have to fix this because right. we can't touch it because it's outside of our property. It's yeah. outside of the wall, sure. but it's the one that goes into our house. So then um, they it, it uprooted the, the right. The it line. uprooted it and it busted the line and like the whole the whole neighborhood smelled like gas. Oh. So we got phone calls going away. It smells like gas outside. So we went outside and went, oh, so then we called uh, we called the fire department. They came over, shut the gas off, called the gas company. Yep. And then the gas company immediately came. And, and did they use it. the little thing or did they know right away where it was? Oh no, they, they knew exactly. You could yeah. see the pipe. You could, we go, look, it's right oh, there. Oh, okay. you could see like the root just, oh. and every, it just kept pushing and pushing until it went boom, and then it just cracked and popped open. Wow. Yeah. And that's, a, that's the last one I got, too. So I was like, gas leak. Oh, shit. So then I had to, you know, that's scary stuff, man. Yeah, of course. Because, like, I don't know. Like, most people don't think gas leak's a big deal. But if you, if, if you don't think a gas leak is a big deal and it can cause a lot, today, actually, in the morning or maybe yesterday, but it was on the news this morning, uh, in Austin, Texas, two, uh, cop, some cops showed up to a gas leak because a, a car rammed into a house. You check it, it's up, and you can see the house blow up no yeah you could see a car like drives into a house creates a gas Whoa. leak the cops show up and then you just hear and you see the explosion so oh yeah it happens bro wow so what are you gonna do this weekend in naples florida um cisco wants to go jet ski okay because i think i did that years ago with you guys right yeah and you hooked yeah so he wants to do that um i don't know i got a lot of writing to do so yeah. i'm gonna be inside a little bit um, I'm staying, the place we're staying at, the Hyatt, has a nice little view. Um, you can rent boats and jet skis right there in the backyard. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. probably, you know, do one or the other, or maybe both. Cool. Um, my buddy wanted me, after one of the shows... What's up, Showtime? On Friday or Saturday, to go to, uh, to drive to Miami, but, um... I can't do that because you got three shows on Saturday. You're gonna be whooped. Well, not even that. Even if we did it tomorrow, I, I'm I, I'm not gonna do a six in the morning party 
thing right. in Miami. It's just not gonna happen. Yeah. So I'm just gonna stay on this side, chill out. To me, this is like the is this it? is like a kind of vacay, kind of chill. Kind yeah, of, this is the chill uh, coast. You know what this is? That over there is the vodka. Like that side is the vodka. North is the vodka. This to me is the red wine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Two well, glasses it's of the red margarita wine. pina colada. Yeah. yeah. Relax. Right. Yeah. So that that's kind of it. So I'm gonna I'm I'm probably gonna find some stuff to do that's chill. Cool. Maybe they got a kind of cute kind of a pool there, so I might go to the pool a little bit. But I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna go hang out at the beach and just chill for a while. I love I love I love I love fire and water. I love fireplaces at night. I like I it. I love rivers yes. and oceans during the day. Um, energetically, it, it cleanse you in a different way. If you believe in that, I do. Um, so it takes me to to very good and passive places. Because if you've ever seen me, I'm very intense on stage. Very. And so that intensity needs to kind of dissipate and dissolve into something different when I'm not on stage. Because the calmer and the the more pensive I am off stage, the better I am on stage. Because it makes me want to pop out even more, tell you even more, let you know even more what that joke is, what that thought is. I want to bring you into my world with with much more a connection. So for me, that's that's a fun thing to do. Tell me, we, we had a great conversation this morning about getting off stage and the thoughts and the, the things that go through your head. And I was like, wow, people want to know, like, this is interesting, right? So tell me, tell right. me what, what that's all about. So the, 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 the strangest part of being on stage for me is getting off stage. It's the most uncomfortable part. It's the weirdest part. It's just, it's the part of the show for me that doesn't fit. And most people don't understand why it's hard to get off stage. You just say goodnight, just get off stage. Yeah. But when you're a comedian and you've been telling all these jokes, you're expected at the end of the show to tell a big joke. And then in the midst of that applause or cheers or whatever you're getting, you're supposed to say goodnight and walk away. Well, with me, it's like going to a party and hanging out with people that you've really never met before yeah. but you engage with them and they really like you and they enjoyed your company and then when you say I'm leaving everybody goes hey everybody Carlos is leaving man do we all enjoy his car it, it feels weird now you gotta say bye to everybody now you gotta make sure because if you didn't say bye to Eric then Eric's gonna get yeah. mad and you're supposed to say bye to Mary and now if you you gotta be excited and you gotta say hey and this is this is the bullshit part of the night it's not it's not real you guys actually spent the time you did together the fun you had is what you had and now it's that moment of like hey we're gonna hang out later let's do this again it's just it's not it's not real and that's what it feels like to me when i'm on stage at the end of a show we laughed i saw you i heard you and now i gotta say good night and you supposed to cheer and then I walk yeah. off stage and then I meet you again to take pictures with you and then I got to pretend to be that guy when it's the, it's just a very very it's like a big function awkward, or a banquet and yeah. then you try to say goodbye to everyone and it's like it's just uh, awkward right yeah 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 it's yeah. an awkward like, moment oh, bye guys thank you right. and I just kind of like all right like I wish I was going to shake everyone's hand I wish that I could end shows by being like oh well I'm done and everybody was like man that was amazing bro thanks man I appreciate that and and walk off stage but here's the problem when you put on a good show People want to cheer for you. Right. Because that's their way of saying thank you for putting on a good show. Yeah. So if I don't say goodnight in an appropriate way, I'm kind of robbing them. Like somebody told me that. They're like, well, okay, maybe you just want to walk off stage. But I want an opportunity to let you know how funny you yeah. were, how how thankful I am. Right. So could you say like goodnight so I can applaud and cheer for you? So now there's that side. So it's like it gets you see what I mean? Like a good night turned into everything that I've said. It's that <laughs> complicated. It's a simple good night. And that's what bothers me about it, that it's just, it's not that simple. Yeah. Well, this time, we're going to test the waters. 
Let's try something. Okay. What am I supposed to try? I don't know. We gotta try, we gotta figure out how to make it. Make I'll it think work. of something. Well, now now I you found a way to do it, where I just tell people, look, I'm awkward at ending shows. I yeah. just don't know how to do it, and I tell them why. Mm-hmm. And 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 then I say, so I hope you had a good time, and thank you. And then I allow. And then them. everyone the crowd erupts. Right. It they usually, go nuts. They go nuts. Yeah. But I'm really honest about like you know. Why? Because at that point, it's like, look, first of all, I don't like ending shows partially also because I am having fun, and who wants to who wants to stop the fun? Stop the fun. My Nobody. kids certainly don't. Right. So I don't want to stop the fun, but every beginning has an ending, so we gotta end it somewhere. But so I, I just tell people, you know, a version of that truth, and then I just say, well, thanks for coming out. Good night, man. Appreciate it. And then they're cool about it. Then they understand. Why I'm not going, thank you, good night, you know, and doing all that yeah. stuff. Curtain they get it. And all that. Right. Because right. they're like, oh, he's he's awkward about this. So it's okay. All right, Naples. Carlos Mencia, Thursday through Sunday. No curtain call at the end of the show. <laughs> just an awkward ending. Just like the captain's log is going to end right now.